So tell us about the the tour. What 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 is in this family friendly comedian show? Well, are you are you genuinely making any attempt to to go mainstream? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I talk about having. I want to become a mainstream entertainer. Yeah, um, like Ant and Deck. Yeah, not the one. Not the one that drinks and drives. The other one. <laughs> who does cocaine and prostitutes. I want to be like that. <laughs> I want to be like that one. Um, so that sets up the show yeah. quite nicely. Um, or I want to be like Philip Schofield yeah. before he jumped the queue. <laughs> I want to be like the old Philip, not the new one. Yeah. Um, the straight Philip Schofield. So before he came, before he came out. Yeah. And before he jumped the, the family queue. Yeah, one. The family friendly one. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. It's a good point, well made. That, yeah. You know, the the lives of these people who are the family friendly entertainers. Yeah. And they're the aren't... most depraved bastards around. <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, cut that out for the podcast. Um, <laughs> I think that's because... fine. <laughs> well, you know, but showbiz has been full of uh, you know people who are family friendly entertainers who've turned out well, to be. We front, grew up yeah. in a different era. We did, but yeah. Uh, in the nineteen forties were a bit very different time, <laughs> but. Children's entertainers, as we knew them, we don't even have to repeat the names no. of John Leslie, <laughs> notorious Blue Peter presenter, yeah. Rolf Harris. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> one of the things I talk about in the show is how has how has um, Ted Bundy. John Wayne Gacy, Jeffrey Dahmer, and Jimmy Savile got a Netflix show before me. <laughs> I'm doing something wrong. You are. How many people do I have to kill to get a Netflix series? That's a good question. Even Prince Andrew's on The Crown. Yeah. It's true. How have I not got a Netflix show? It is true. What do I have to do? <laughs> Would you what want... did you do? <laughs> well, I've not got... No, I can't get any Netflix. I've, I've had to do... And every... you've done some de I've... depraved things I've in your life. I've done some terrible things. I'm not allowed on any of these... On any of these sides. You had to, to start do... your own podcast. I have to do my own stuff. Because they were... They're... I'm still asking them to... The gatekeepers to let me in. Yeah, but you don't... You know, you don't need to. I mean, you... The... You know, you're uncancelable. Cancelable. That's easy for you to say. It is. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, you, you'd ever... You're just performing live. If theatre said they didn't want you, I suppose, the only is if you did something so bad that theatre said we won't book him, but a, you could still perform, right? You used, still do, you used to do podcasts. Well, yeah, I used to. Uh, <laughs> but now we live in an era where you could be the most cancelled human being on the planet, yeah. and they'll put you on the biggest platform <laughs> on a reality show. Yeah. It's incredible, the world. These commissioning editors, how spineless they are, um, who would let disgraced MPs who are still sitting MPs on the biggest platform in the country. Yeah. I mean, it's an, it's an you know, we, this has come up earlier in the series, but it's, it's an interesting thing. And it, you know, you do start, that, you do, when you're doing shows on TV and then you suddenly think, oh, is Matt Hancock going to be a guest on a show? You know, you don't know. If you were doing The Jungle Show and then you just turned up and Matt Hancock's there and you weren't, you didn't know he was going to be in the... the I'll kick the fuck out of that yeah. guy. <laughs> because... What the fuck are you doing here, you can <laughs> What piece of shit booked this guy? I never got a call, but he got paid £400,000 yeah. to do a show like that. £400,000. And he's... Uh, and, you know, this is the guy who... Um, he, was tr he got caught trying to get fish fingers in a... <laughs> Shit on his fingers. <laughs> I mean, the guy's a piece of shit. And I, I know, but we want to see what he's like. We want to see if he's like. I don't give a fuck what these politicians are like. I just want to know if they're good politicians. Yeah. That's. I don't want to hang out with these people. They're supposed to be running the country. Who cares? You don't. They don't care what I'm like backstage. They yeah. care what I'm like on the stage. Sure. We ain't going out for dinner afterwards. <laughs> Me and this bearded woman ain't meeting up afterwards. <laughs> We ain't swapping beard techniques. <laughs> That's it. It's the stage, unless, of course, the what you do backstage is so depraved that you should yeah. be cancelled. But no one really cares. Why do we want to know what he's like? For no, it's a good reason? question. But I think that you know, all the points you're making there are fantastic because you know, they, you you probably wouldn't. I mean, you have been on TV shows, and there are you know, you've been on Celebrity Antiques Roadshow, which is a, a sort of surprise. But 
Um, but, you know, it, it is it, because of your act uh, and what you do live, I think people might be cautious about booking you. But what you're doing, like, you know, you're doing a comedy show in which you will, you know, you do. You, there are no holes barred, really, and you'll talk about any subject, but, but in a satirical way, I think. But but what you're saying is all these other people who are family entertainers, you know, well, have, yeah. have done things in reality that aren't jokes in reality, yeah. <laughs> and that they they manage to PR their way. Through. It is well, very exactly. interesting. That. It's interesting because if I was saying the stuff I say on stage at Parliament, yeah. <laughs> there's an issue. Yeah. What I'm saying is on a comedy stage, and the show is titled as a comedy show, so the th you know, automatically the threat has been. Demor it's been, you, there's no, this isn't real. <laughs> they're yeah. jokes. What these fuckers are doing is real. And there are manifesting problems that result off the back of what they do. Their actions have consequences. Sure. Now, I don't think my actions on stage have serious consequences to the extent that the, the conservative parties do. No. I might be going into realms here that, are, you know, that it's not, it's actually not funny. But, if you can make it funny on stage for me to ridicule the hypocrisies that the country is being led in, then that's the issue I'm talking about. Yeah. But yet, you know, why am I seen as controversial on stage? I'm not really that controversial. I'm just the average Nick Mohammed. <laughs> <laughs> we will definitely build this as being still being Nick. Yeah. Keep... And we won't mention the issue. And let's see how his career goes. We could we could we could take him down. Well, if you actually advertise this as Nick Mohammed and put my face on the actual <laughs> PR yeah. plug, and they probably wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> um, but I think when I was, you know, when I started stand-up in the late 90s, uh, at, at that point, you'd already been doing it for 35 years. <laughs> and when, but um, it, it was, there wasn't much diversity within the entertainment no. field. And um, they, there was no box ticking going on. So I was kind of ignored for a lot of things. Yeah. It, it, but th the fact was, I was doing stand-up as I knew it, as a British, in, you know, I'm Indian of heritage, but born in London. I'm a North London working class man, boy then. And uh, that was my experience. But all of a sudden, it's like, well, you're not. That, yeah, that's, not that's not what we need you on TV for. In fact, I couldn't even represent India, because I don't know enough about it, because I'm a Londoner. Yeah. But that was what the TV people see you as. You become, at that point, I really re I realized that actually my race is, is quite a big factor now in the entertainment field. Yeah. And now there's diversity quotas. They have to have one person of an ethnic background, one woman, one, it's very diverse. It, it's strange, we're not just seen, it's not seen as just on your own merits. You know, I'm doing, right. I love audience, I love live, live audiences are where I thrive, but that, unfortunately that's not how TV works. No, but do you, just, do you really miss that? Because I feel like all the stuff you're saying really is TV's going down this sort of sinkhole of not really being about comedy, whereas you're out on stage and performing in huge venues and selling out, which, which big venue did you sell at Wembley or the O2? Where did Wembley, Wembley and last, last tour, yeah. Yeah, so you sold out Wembley. I mean, that's... To me, as a stand-up comedian, that's what uh, people are doing TV in order for, to be able yeah. to sell out Wembley. If you can sell out Wembley, you don't need to do TV, do you? Well, no. I mean, you know, TV. What what is there to do on TV exactly. unless you have a good vehicle? Yeah. Most of the vehicles, it's a it's a dying format, unfortunately, and that's why they have to go to the extremes of booking disgusting MPs on these yeah. shows to to essentially troll the public into watching the show. Well, yeah. absolutely. I mean, they're, they're not even really hiding that fact. You know, well, if, it's if, just... if it's newsworthy, that he's paid for it. He's paid for his fee in the, in the amount of publicity, and we're still talking about it. Yeah, now we're talking it's about over, it. And you know, we're still so they're they're getting the they're getting exactly their money's worth out of out of that guy. And mm. maybe maybe it'll turn out that he has a showbiz career, or maybe it'll come out and we'll find out. People were. I think a lot of people were voting for him just to piss off what they perceived as people who would be annoyed by him still being in. Well, yeah. Uh, and and that's what people think is it's if it because people haven't been affected by the last few years. Yeah. Fortunately for those people, that's a you know that's a good thing for them. But for the people who have been affected, it's not something we've lived through essentially a war. We've lost more people in the last few years in this country than essentially a war. Yeah. So t to be thinking, oh, this is really I'm, I'm really pleased for to upset people who have 
lost loved ones and, and have their lives turned upside down. This is going to be a great thing to do. I, I, it's not something I would find funny or as a human being. Forget on stage, you know, yeah. it's, we're doing jokes on stage about things. It's very different to people who have been heavily affected by what, what people's lives are still affected and, and they'll never be the same, mine included. So sure. I find it quite offensive, in fact. And, and, and comedy doesn't offend me, but things like that I find uh, yeah. abhorrent. Well, you know, people don't... I mean, that, that kind of person who just thinks, oh, let's try and mm. piss off people we don't like. Yeah. And they're not, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not, the kind of people who go to the World Cup dressed as in Crusader costumes when it's in the Middle yeah. East. I mean, if they were making some point about human rights in the Middle East, that might be something, but they're not. They just don't even realise that that's an offensive thing to do. Yeah, and, um, and then commenting on their regime and then going out there and taking the money. If we're going to comment on the regime, all right, you've got to follow it through. You can't just say, oh, it's terrible. Like, and then you're sitting out there commentating and, and, taking, the, and taking the money. Obviously, you had the yeah. com you've had conversations about this before, but you know, people have said when we hosted the World Cup, homosexuality was illegal at the time. And yeah. the way it was the, but it was the 60s. It was a very different time, and things have moved on. But <sighs> how, how do you, you, just, you just don't go. Yeah. If, if this was uh, some kind of homophobic, racist, sexist podcast, I wouldn't think, you know what, I'm going to let that go. and sure. I'm going to sit there with Richard Herring <laughs> and, and just talk to him and, and, and kind of put that in the back of my mind. I wouldn't be able to sit here. Cause I'm, but then, What if I gave you £10 million pounds a I'd, year to come on the podcast? I'd, I'd sit here. <laughs> and, <laughs> but you wouldn't, you wouldn't give me £10 pounds to be on this podcast. This is the irony of... <laughs> But the, no, you know, playing in an arena like this is yeah. very rare to sell out arenas. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. It's an incredible thing.